Hey, good day. It's time for cooking something good, cooking something good. It's a foodie show where fun is food, food is fun, and it's always foodie fun time here at Cooking Something Good. Great show for you today. Luca Onafri, owner of Carmine's in beautiful Newburyport, Massachusetts. Before we get there, though, I want to remind everyone today's secret code word is at 21 minutes and 19 seconds. How does that work, you ask? I'll tell you. At 21 minutes and 19 seconds, I'm going to say a word, whatever I word I say, whatever I word, whatever word I say, all you have to do is be the first person, be the first person to send us a text with that word. The text number is 732-336-1040, 732-336-1040, and you will win a $25 Visa gift card. You can use it for gas. You can use it for groceries. You can use it for food. You can use it when you go out to a restaurant. You can use it if you go to a restaurant and get a pizza takeout. You can use it for, say you want to buy some bananas. Say you want to buy uh, detergent. You want to buy some softener for your laundry. You get the point. You can use it for anything you want. 21 minutes. Am I right about that? Yeah. Tw right? Yeah, 21 minutes and 19 seconds. Whatever word I say at 21 minutes and 19 seconds, that's the word of the day. 732-336-1040. You can call or you can text. Easy as that. Uh, I don't forget. Well, you can't remember yet because I haven't told you. But if you're in the 413 area code, um, Western Massachusetts, especially in Hampshire, Franklin or Hampton County, we've got on our shop one left. We found it. It's a 20, no, it's a $10 gift certificate to Nick's Nest Hot Dogs for only five bucks. Just go to csgbn.com, go to our shop and you can buy this. A $10 gift certificate to Nick's Nest for only $5. I love Nick's Nest. My parents would take us there on Friday nights uh, when we were little kids and you got hot dogs and baked beans and cotton candy and popcorn and oh, great stuff. They had great hot dogs. They still do. They have a secret recipe. They won't tell anybody. So it's worth the trip up to Nick's Nest Restaurant. Also, going back to the word of the day, 21 minutes and 19 seconds, not only will you win a $25 gift card from Visa, you'll also get one of our Cooking Something Good My Recipe Books shipped to you. Cooking Something Good My Recipe Books. So a little package there. You can't go wrong. A lot of you have noticed I have not shaved yet because I still have this thing uh, I actually went to a barber and shaved once, but I can't shave with my left hand. Mm. Um, and I said before, I can brush my teeth with my left hand, but I can't shave with my left hand. All these motions I'm making around my face. Great show today. Uh, uh, Luca Onafri from Carmine's Restaurant in Newburyport. I went there the other day uh, with my daughter, Izzy, and we had a, just a great meal in Newburyport. What a great town. I haven't been there since I was, I don't know, six or seven years old. And we had a great time. Luca is an old friend. I met Luca. He's a he's a friend of, uh, he is the nephew of one of my closest friends. I met him when he was a kid, 13, 14 years old, working on the line at his uncle's restaurant, a very well-known restaurateur. And we'll get into that uh, during the interview. Uh, and so he was a kid. I was middle-aged. Now he's middle-aged uh, and I'm an old man. Uh, funny how that works, right? Great restaurant, Carmine's. We're going to have a bunch of gift certificates uh, going up for sale as soon as this show is about half over. Again, csgbn.com. And those are, what are those? Those are uh, $50 gift certificates for $25 to Carmine's in Newburyport. One per customer, please. But uh, again, a great deal, a great meal, a great town, and a great interview. We hope you enjoy it. And we're going to get to it right now. Three, two, one, and let's rock and roll. Hey, we're back cooking something good. My new haircut. Check it out. Nothing there. <laughs> Nothing there. Oh, if bald is beautiful, then I am. I'm Brad Pitt. Yeah, and I'm becoming him. So <laughs> and Luca on <Onofrey> a <laughs> with us. Luca from Carmen's in Newburyport. <laughs> Okay. So Carmine took, Newburyport. Carmine, Carmine Newburyport. I took my daughter there. My daughter is, uh, I, I brought her up right. Uh, I, I taught her how to eat uh, under the tutelage of, of your uncle, uh, Damiano De Paola, Damien De Paola. She had your eggplant parm and she looked at me and said, best eggplant parm I've ever 
had. Luca, welcome to Cooking Something Good, my old friend. And thanks, Dave. It's nice to have you. I've got to, I've got to tell people what happened. Uh, last week, we haven't seen each other in years, long, long time. So last week, uh, we got together and we did an interview, and then I listened back to it, and we didn't talk about your restaurant. We didn't talk about food. We just caught up on old. <laughs> Yeah, we did, which was nice. It was nice for us, but for the viewer, they'd be like, come on. Now, we can still, like, we're still we still going to tell some of these stories because they're yep. good stories, but we're going to talk first and foremost uh, about your restaurant. Congratulations. Beautiful location. Really nice ambiance and the food. It's exactly what I expected. Uh, and I'll tell, I'll tell my listeners why, because I remember you as, you're a, what, 44, 45-year-old man now. Yes. I, remember, I remember you as a 14-year-old kid at the end of the line at your uncle's restaurant. So it's no surprise that, uh, that you have a restaurant of your own now that has uh, that serves food that that's, that's really that good. Talk a little bit about uh, how, you, how you learned to cook. Where, where, did, where did it all come from? Well, it came from a lot, a lot of it came from just a, a general family uh, influence. Um, you know, I watched my grandparents cook a lot on Sundays. My dad owned a French restaurant. Uh, so it was back and forth from my, my dad's cooking, my mother's cooking, back to Sundays, watching my grandmother uh, cook. And she did teach me directly quite a few things uh, through the years up until uh, pretty recently uh, when she passed away in uh, 2019, uh, you know, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, my grandfather passed away at a younger age, and but I didn't really get to, I wasn't really exposed 100% to my grandparents' style. But what my uncle did is he- And who's he, your he uncle? Told, tell people- tell Damien people. DiPaolo from Carmelinas, and yeah, yeah. actually now in the North End, started out in Hadley, Massachusetts, which is how you know him, Dave. Yeah. And uh, what, what I, you know, what I see what happened was my uncle uh, took all, everything that he was taught directly and just kind of turned it into something else and maybe something that everybody else is a little bit more familiar with. So in turn, um, you know, when my first time at Carmelina's, I was about, geez, I was about eight years old and he uh, dropped the crazy Alfredo right in front of me. And that's when I got hooked and I wanted to learn a whole lot more. And I, and I, and, and I did. You know, yeah. and um, you, now, Carmine, food, I can tell you some of the food is you can tell that you've had great influences and, and have developed into a great chef because the food, everything was just surreal. It was so good. Thank you very much, Dave. That's a real serious compliment coming from you because you know firsthand uh, all about that, that style of food and technique from the restaurant Hadley. Yeah. And uh, which is exactly what I, you know, that that was one time you came in is where I really wanted to show so, so, you know, a lot of people from that western part of Massachusetts, they're mostly familiar with the way I cook yeah. because just because that's where I was exposed, you know. Come back. Lucas frozen. Lucas frozen. That are like, wow, I can't believe you know all this stuff. And it's just because I wasn't into it here as I was there because the food was different. It was what I, where my focus is. But anyway... I wanted to create Carmine part like beef, but I kind of turned it into something a little different. So I took the Mimo steak. Hey, Luca, hold, Luca, Luca, hold on one second. You froze up there for a second. And okay. I enjoyed it because when you froze up, it was like a picture of you making a really goofy face. So I got great joy out of it. <laughs> but we're gonna, it should be fine. Yeah, go back to you were talking about Mimos. Uh, Mimos, the Mimos steak that you had, I was really wanted to, I was, I'm glad you ordered that because you remember that steak that we had at Old. You frozen again? Yeah. And I, up? Yeah, let's so start from the, I wanted to go back to that. Uh, Go back to where you said you hoped that I had ordered that. So say I hope you. Yes, ordered. I was hoping I was hoping that you'd order that steak because it was it was uh, that steak that I have here is kind of a riff on that old steak that you remember, but it's mixed with a couple of different dishes like the black garlic beef, which was with mushrooms and a balsamic uh, glaze, almost yeah. like my own demi glace. 
It was, right? it brought so back, we put that on. Yeah, it brought back memories, which was great because it was one of my favorite dishes that Damien used to make. Yes. But there was a there was a twist to it that I loved. There you go. And that's that's what that was my dream was to, you know, my uncle told me, he's like, I'm going to give you all this stuff, but you can't give it to anybody. You have to use it for you. You know, and 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 that was so young when he told me that. And that's all I could think about, you know, and that's is the result that you had was my lifetime. You know, dream of one of the my lifetime dream dishes of, of, that I came up with, and it's it's almost like a Ferrari of steaks. You know, that's yeah. how I think it was about it. so, so, so. And I tell you, it was what, nice folks. to watch you eat it, too, Dave. Oh, I couldn't stop. You really stopped the jokes and you got serious for a minute. It's yeah, not like there's there's a time for fooling around. There's a time for no more fooling around. And of course, yeah. I started with the ahi tuna because it's just, I mean, that dish is just so good. That was my appetite. And yeah, uh, we try to touch on things that are, you know, not quite. You know, I mean, there's no soy in it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, uh, what's that green stuff? The green stuff. The green stuff that you eat with sushi. Seaweed. No, not seaweed. The other stuff, the really hot stuff. Oh. Fruit. It's um, wasabi. Wasabi. No wasabi. No wasabi. So every time you get a sea tuna, you probably get sesame encrusted. You get wasabi. And it's like a really nice touch. And it's a twist on something that everybody's familiar with. But it's totally different. You're not expecting that soy. You're, not, you're expecting like a soy flavor in it. You're not getting that. You're getting it's a crudo you know, that you're getting, it's a half sear. So all the flavor and, and seasoning is on one side. And then you're getting the jalapeno on top. You get that nice little glaze and you get the potatoes under it. So it really is a lot of elements to that dish that um, it was I really a, thought people would it enjoy. Was a great, it was a great combination. I did love the, I got a big, big ass jalapeno. And that's, that's always going to put a smile on my face. Yeah, there you go. And your daughter saying that the eggplant farm, was the best she was ever that had. Good. That's saying something. So that dish there was, you know, I really didn't want it on the menu, but I, I ended up putting it on there because everybody was kind of asking for it. Like, you can have eggplant farm. Okay. You know, and it didn't have the ingredients really that uh, I was, I, I didn't have the ingredients for a specific dish that I wanted. I kind of wanted to mimic the Carmelita's, uh, you know, Japanese eggplant, but I decided to, to just go with what I can get my hands on. And I also decided to use Fontina because the Fontina kind of stretches and stays hot the whole, for the whole experience. And I thought that was a nice touch. That was a you really know, for nice. me to differentiate and do my own thing is, you know, it's hard to focus on that when you got so much operating to do. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that I did it, you know? Yeah. I mean, let's, let's break away for a second. Yes. Talk about a couple of things that are pretty important to me. Three things, four things. The first is, have you ever seen my belly button? Yes, Dave. I've seen it a thousand times. Thank Is that the worst much. belly button you've ever seen in your life? Yeah, it's horrible. It's like a side. I can't ever get those seconds back from my, uh, you know, ever <laughs> again. It's something you can't get back. But it, interesting, Dave. Thanks for sharing that. No problem. The next thing, <laughs> why on God's earth do you have to have a screw, a, a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver? Why can't I just you think the Phillips is more, more effective, Dave. Then why do you have the other one? just so you have to have two screwdrivers. And I got to tell you something. If you need a Phillips head, you got a flathead you can find. If you need a flathead, you got yourself a Phillips head screwdriver. It's Murphy's Law. You can never find what the hell you're looking for. For God's yes. sakes, just make one or the other and do away with the rest. I've had it with his bullshit. You know what they, they call a toolbox in a restaurant? What's that? Missing. <laughs> <laughs> That's Why? it. Why? <laughs> Hey, you said your know. you said your dad worked in a French restaurant or owned a French restaurant. Yeah, he owned a French restaurant, it, and uh, he said that Lydia Shia was his uh, one of one of his chefs at one time. Which you know, I don't know how true that is because my dad's always joking around, kind of like you do, you know, in all seriousness. And then you find out that he was just bullshitting you after. You know, oh, my belly button, my stuff. belly button. That's no joke, man. <laughs> I can't get that time back uh. at all. Like you know, especially the one with you in the toilet. I can't get that one out of my head. Uh, oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Is this live? It's not live, right? Not live, but I'm going to keep that in. I don't care. <laughs> hey, we had a great time. You were a very young man. We went to visit your uncle Damien, who's a good friend of mine. Went to visit him in uh, when he was in cooking school in Paris. And we yeah, go to blue. Yeah, three or four nights. 
we just went for a, we didn't go for long, but what a trip, huh? That is one of the most memorable trips I've ever taken. Uh, that every, was a great trip, you know, and you stepped on more dog crap than I've ever known. It was almost uh, like you meant, you just wanted to make sure you stepped on every well, you know, he, dog crap. Your uncle warned us. He said, he said, listen, they don't clean up here. Keep your head down. It's like the first five minutes I kept bonking in a side post. Had a slight concussion. I'm thinking I'd rather step in dog do than get a concussion. <laughs> you, on the other hand, have never recovered from the concussion. You still have those penny loafers. That's how much I remember you doing. No, they don't sell them anymore. They don't? Did they you have the find them You did anywhere. have pennies in them. They had pennies right? in them. Penny loafers. Yeah. You know why I like them? Because you slip them on and you slip them off. And now they've got these new go online and buy these shoes that you can just slip on. I'm like, penny loafers. Just penny loafers. Yep. You know, um, and being being only only a part Italian, not a hundred percent. You and Damien just couldn't get over the shoes because shoes are a very important part of of a, of an yeah. Italian the scarps, life. Call them, those are the scarps. Yeah, very important Scarpa. part of your life. <laughs> but now, anyway, back to cooking. Did you have any French influence from from your dad owning that restaurant, or, or not really? Any what? Any any? Do you have a French a French influence? Do you do well, any- you know what? A lot, a lot of my uh, Damien taught me all the French techniques yeah, yeah. that he knows. And that, that's what we incorporate into cooking. It's it's a lot of sauces. We do a lot of stocks, a lot of reductions. We do, you know, like a beurre blanc. We created a cacio pepe, my own cacio pepe out of a beurre blanc, yeah. which, is, which is phenomenal, you know. And um, just all different reductions, like the balsamic glaze is, is a demi-glace. Or um, you know, just you know, we 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 do a lot of different things that require it. Some of the knife skills, you know, um, but we don't do ultimately a ton of French technique incorporation. But the French technique that we incorporate, may, it has a huge impact on the menu. Yeah, and you, you know, know if, you, if you go to the northern part of Italy, the northwestern part of Italy, the cooking has a a bigger French influence in that region as to oppose where my family's from the south of, of Italy. But Italy is, is, a, is a country with a bunch of countries within it that has their own dialect, their own food, their own food techniques. It, it's really, it's really a, a- It's a melting pot of all different, all different techniques. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, I think that maybe the, the food is a little more simple in the North. I'm not really sure. I don't quite remember, but I just remember like we're going to a restaurant in Italy and it was just, there's no meat on pizza. You just get a cheese pizza. If you want a pasta, it's tomato sauce. There's really nothing else. And then once you get more towards, you know, the southern part of Italy, you run into like Bologna and all those places where they have the Bolognese. And then you get more into Sicily. There is still a lot of red sauce. But I personally think they incorporate a lot of uh, aromatics. And, and Yeah. And, and know what like I noticed. The I mean, olive oils and the, you know, things that don't have a lot to do with uh, sauces like you know eating cutlets without any red sauce on them or broccoli rape uh, made with uh, red wine things like that just all different there's just so many different places you can go with with food and you really find it when you're out there yeah my reason you know? the one thing I was impressed with is how good the food was how fresh the food was and how I, the, for lack of better word how unbusy it was they made it simple they use just enough of just the right ingredients. There's nothing- and the ingredients are different out there too. So like the garlic out there is much different than, than yeah, the garlic. The, the tomatoes, the tomatoes out there. And I grew up in an area that has really good tomatoes in season, but I have to tell you the tomatoes well, were- un- You know, Dave, out there, they keep tomatoes for themselves. I don't think they're importing the same tomatoes these days that they that they did years ago. I don't think so either. Like the San, um, God, I'm going to say San Marzano. The, yeah, uh, San Marzano's are good, and I, it's, it's, I don't think I mean, they're the same. The, they're really not, but, you know, I mean, it's all, it's a tough market right now, so it's all really what you get your hands on. Yeah. And how, and it's, and I think the real winners, uh, I shouldn't say winners, but the people that really know how to um, supplement in the business, know how to find uh, high quality ingredients within, within the country lately. And that's you know, a that's a big difference. That's a big difference maker, having fresh ingredients. Now you have a you have a a staff. You got a lot of people working with you. Yeah, well, the staff is what makes the restaurant. Who do you have there that uh, that that 
you really well, first off first off actually my stepson uh jd uh he couldn't wait for me to open this restaurant up and he was dying to work i said all right i said you sure you want to do this because it's not easy you know he came in with bells on we've had some rough times uh and training's not easy but he kind of you know, he really spent, I, I spent a third of my life with my stepsons with Jake and, uh, and JD and JD really was into, he loves food, you know, Jake as well, but JD really, uh, and both the both of them rather really into the depths of, of the flavors and everything else, but really never knew how to cook, but they would watch me make meatballs obsessively. So I got here and Jay, one of JD's first jobs was to like be in charge of making the meatballs and he makes a meatball. That's like amazing. I'm going to, you know, that. and I, I'd like to say that, and, and now, actually, he didn't even know how to boil water, and now he's my sushi. And how long's it been? Nineteen years old. And when? How long did he? How long ago did he start? He started. We opened. He, I think he started about four weeks after we were open. So about August tenth of last. And year? since August, his August of two thousand of last year. And that. But he's that, been with me for a year. Wow. And he's been he's been with me for a year, and he makes everything on them. I don't even need to be back. That's he does amazing. everything perfectly. Amazing. You know? And there's yeah, always rough times. I can remember Damien screaming at you in the kitchen when you were a kid, throwing stuff at you. Yeah. That's just part of it. I mean, that's part of, of the learning process for a chef. Yeah. And a good you chef is going to, you know, you got to know when to stop. You when do, to stop. Yeah, you can't learn unless you get some kind of discipline. And it, it does hurt to give people the kind of discipline that, that I went through, but like, you know, you, you got to let up at the right times. Yeah. You know, sometimes I even pushed him to quit. Uh, I was so tough on him. I actually did push him to quit a few times. And, and, um, but with the thought of like, all right, I got to keep him now. I got to hold him in. I got to get him focused. You know, when I come in and, you know, there's, there's so many different things and it's not just the food. It's, it's about staying focused on what you're doing. And if you're coming in and, and I, and if as a cook, when I went to the restaurant and it didn't matter what I was doing, if I was cooking something and I didn't look interested in what I was doing, I would catch hell. If I looked like I was thinking about something else when I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, it, it was assumed that I wasn't paying attention. I was going to screw something up and it's instilled in me. So, you know, there's a, to a certain extent, you got to be, uh, you gotta be tough. And JD always told me, he's like, you gotta be tough around me growing up. He's like, you can talk to me and my, talk to my wife and I and say, and you know, you guys should be a little tough around me. I wish you were a little tough. I said, okay. You know, so when he gets really mad at me in the line, I'd say, you know, you, you told me your whole life, you want us to be tough. Now I'm tough. And now you don't want me to be tough anymore. You know? So I, he didn't think that was funny, but I mean, it was kind of a joke. I threw around. He didn't think it was funny, but I mean, all in all, yeah, who cares? You know, it's a powerful, right. It's a powerful being this, you know, not being, you can't be nice all the time, but you know, I'm the type of person that's tough until I, and I'll let up when I feel like everything's under control, yeah. you know, and this kid has the ability to really make that happen. Without something, getting distracted. The, the next generation of something very special in a kitchen. It's it's really in a kit in my kitchen not so much because I'm cooking for myself or four or five at the most six seven people, but in a kitchen like yours, it's got to be about energy, right? It's got to be yes. about. I mean, the whole if, restaurant, Dave. Yeah, if somebody doesn't have the energy, does it drag everybody else down? It does. It doesn't matter how well someone works, but if the energy's low, it 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 it's a burden, especially in a restaurant owner. And when you go to you go to talk to someone or ask them a question and and they don't want to answer you or they give you a, a runaround or something like that, that's what hurts, you know. Yeah. But if I know someone's working hard and screwing up with a good attitude and can handle a little criticism, that's fine. You know, that's that's when things really start to work because I know there everybody's listening and, and they're learning from their mistakes. But if people get offended and they're looking for a pat on the back, that's just not going to work. You can't yeah. do that, you know. Except people need for me. to develop good. People need to develop good habits for themselves so that they can do something on their own and be good at it without screwing up. You see, I've, you know? always, I've never had that problem because I'm an eater. It's what I do. And I always do it with energy and passion and desire. So yeah. I've never had the- And no ball breakers, you're a ball breaker too. So that's not part of your repertoire, really. 
You know what yeah, I mean? I, I know. I'm a, ball, <laughs> I'm a ball breaker when it comes to good food. Let's talk about, new, let's talk about I was sweat, when you were here. I was sweating it out. I was like, all right, what's he going to, you know, what's he thinking? And I seen the eyebrows raised. Your daughter loved everything. And I was happy. Oh God. I absolutely love it. Let's talk about Newberry port. I, I've never, I don't think I've been there in 50 years. I think I was eight years old the last time I went there. And then we went up to Plum Island. Then we went to the roller roller coaster somewhere up there it was the largest wooden roller coaster in roller coaster in the world and it's kind oh, that's of that's like canopy lake no that's no it wasn't, wasn't canopy lake it was um it was right near plum island i think it was newburyport but i can't remember but i've been in newburyport oh. but boy it, that has turned into a great not just the best not just a great dining town because there there's a lot of great restaurants in, in your there's a lot of fantastic restaurants here and that's Dave. so good people you know in any business that kind of competition with so many good restaurants that's healthy for people like for other restaurant tours it keeps everybody on their toes it keeps everybody fired up they got to keep being great every night as opposed if you're the only good restaurant in town yeah maybe on tuesday well, or wednesday we're going to be lousy but or average i, I would say like you know Part of being a good restaurant is a location and who you're surrounded by. Yeah. You know, and who's helping you and who's contributing. And, you know, I'll tell you, this place, Newburyport is really very, there's a lot of camaraderie. There's, there's a lot of support. The town wants you to do well. They put parklets out. They put planters out. And they say, here you go. You know, this is for you. You know, get it to work. Let's make Newburyport a nice place for everybody to go and let's make it a nice place for business owners to want to be around and for people who work to want to be in the, in the area as well. And uh, it's, it's, it's so oriented on, it's really just, there's not, not a lot of politics. Um, everybody's so friendly, every, you know, even right down to like you're, you know, getting permits to open a restaurant or, or if there's some changes made, people show up right away. They don't hold you up. Like everybody wants to see you do well. Yeah, because holding know, holding you up, you go to the, some of these places and they're they don't care a lot of times because they don't care because the government has no competition. But if they're holding a restaurant up thirty days, that's thirty days of paying a mortgage when you have no income, no cash flow. It's you know, it's, yeah. it's time is money. The old adage, time is money. But I was impressed yeah. because I met and they're going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. But I met a, a, a owner and a manager of a pizza joint. Uh, in Newburyport that were eating in your restaurant and had really? one of their shirts on. Yeah. I had the name. I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry, but they were uh, anchor. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. I can't remember. I was, I saw his t-shirt and it was kind of clever. So uh, anyway, I'm like, Hey, I said, Hey, and you're eating here. He goes, Oh yeah. The food here is great. Fantastic. You know, See, I love it. Isn't that great? I'll tell you some of the best, best pizza I've ever had is in Newburyport. I ate some of the best pizza I've ever had is in Newburyport. And it's not just the food. There's a lot to do there. You, yes. can, you can stay at a lighthouse in Newburyport, like a romantic getaway, and then yep. cater, and have it catered by anybody. I had a friend who did that for his wife on their honeymoon. You can, yep. you can fish, you can boat, you can hike. There's a lot to do. And it's just a beautiful city right on the water. Uh, what are some of the other things that uh, you're close to or, uh, some well, of the we other like things. to take, I mean, you know, I'm so wrapped up in this place. I, I really don't even remember the name of the pizza place you're talking about. I know which one it is. So there's a lot of things that, um, thanks, Rocco. Rocco brought me a coffee. Rocco Juan Kenobi, my favorite Star Wars yeah, character. Rocco Capano. Rocco Juan Kenobi. There you go, Rock. Thanks. Have a have a good day. Yep. Uh, I'll get the so, name of it you know, in a second. One thing, one thing I try to do is just get out and take a walk, you know, along the beach. Yeah. So there's a whole, there's a boardwalk extending all the way, you know, you can walk all the way down to Plum Island if you want, you know, and there's a lot of little shops everywhere. Uh, there's fisheries, there's uh, other restaurants, there's some pubs on the way. Um, and you got just, there's a whole lot to look at. There's a lot of history, you know, uh, mainly I'm exposed to a lot of restaurants. They make uh, a really good roast beef sandwich over at, um, a modern butcher. Oh, I love I a butcher. It's, yeah. it's so it's like famous for their roast beef sandwiches. In the North Shore, there's like a lot of competition from that Boston. Place is, that, pl that place is called Stone Crust Pizza. Stone Crust, fantastic. 
Very nice people. I go there for the, they have a good chicken Caesar wrap that I like to get once in a while. And of course, the pizza's fantastic. Hey, let's go back to Italy for a second. Let's do it. Well, let's do it. You know, some of the best meals I had, and I would go in and, and could uh, could bullshit them and say, hey, I, you know, I host this show and they let me in their kitchen, which is great. But I had a, I can't remember what it's called, the kind of pasta I had, but it's, uh, and I actually made it in a cooking class. You take your thumb and you, you go inside out and it just looks like a little half, half of a moon almost. Looks like Is a it Orecchetti or Yeah, Orecchetti. It's Orecchetti. Um, but I had, they had Orecchetti and I was like, you got to tell me how you made this. Got to tell me. So the woman translated for me uh, and the guy said, uh, I use uh, the olio, hey, the tomato, <laughs> hey, the garlic. Eh, That's it. Salt in the water. I was like, are you kidding me? That was it. I was like, it cannot get any better than this. I mean, simple. I really like simple. Simple is easy. It's all about it, it, the ingredients. It's all about using the special ingredients and the, and the right technique. Yeah, I'm sure he had something else in there. Something here. Yeah. They're not going to tell authentic me authentic Italian is that's all it consists of. And then from there, you can you can put some seafood in it, get all your natural flavors. And then you can, you do, there's a lot of things that are derived from simple tomato sauce. Yeah. And that means pretty much anything with tomato sauce in it is derived from a good base. And that's you what know? key. And I, that's what I liked about Puglia, though. I love fish. And it was just, you're right there on the Adriatic, and it's just fish, fish, fish all day long. I could, yeah. I could live like that. I could be the uh, longest living uh, people in the world from yeah. Sardinia. They eat a lot of fish, you know, fish, and uh, fish and olive oil. Fish and olive oil is the healthiest thing you could do. It's good for your brain, it's good for your, uh, you know. Yeah, I do. It's just everything that's. You know, the fish oils running through you, it's a lot of, uh, you know, and, and, and you got to remember, too, that where there's a lot of fish, you don't need as much aromatics and vegetables, really. I mean, yeah. for meat heavy, I mean, this country's really meat heavy, you know, and if you think about it, you really have to use in order to, to gain flavor and reduce acidity in a dish that consists of meat, you need to use vegetables to draw yeah. all that up. So what do you think you're doing when you eat vegetables? You're drying the acidity out of your body. Yeah. You know, so a good, that's why they call it a good balanced meal. And one big reason why in Italy, a lot of people live so long is because they eat a lot of fish and they use a lot of vegetables and a lot of uh, things that permeate with, you know, like bay leaf, things like that. Now, all so, the things your grandmother told you. There's no fast care. food out there, Dave. Yeah. And I loved it. All the things your grandmother told you as a kid are now coming back into fashion. Yes. After all these fad, blah, blah, blah. And that's nice to see. It really is. I it's had kind a, of, go ahead. Yeah. One of my favorite, uh, talking about fish, I love anchovies. I, I mean, I would eat anchovies every day of the year. And when you talk about simple, one of my favorites is my, my Nona's dish that she used to make, and I make it now. It's olive oil that comes in the can with the anchovy. And I just let it break down until it's until it's nothing. And I add some red pepper, and I put it over, um, I put it over uh, a angel hair. Yeah, angel hair goes well with, with any kind of fish. It's not yeah, light, that, you know. That's it. that's it. That's all I put in there. Crushed red pepper. That's it. Done. You do a little anchovy paste sometimes with the garlic. You let it melt in a pan, yeah. and you can throw some capers in there, uh, some chili flakes. You could do like an aglio olio, which is uh, garlic and oil based or a little trace of tomato in there. And, uh, you know, the olive oil really is what brings uh, all the ingredients together. Yeah. Um, it kind of helps the pasta. It uh, helps the sauce stick to the pasta as well. So if using a base sauce with not a whole lot of oil, olive oil in it, you're going to see that pot, that, that sauce kind of slipping off the pasta and you're leaving your pasta white. Whereas if you use some extra virgin olive oil and it when you're actually so, you know, when you're at home, you, you make it a pot of sauce, right? Yeah. You take another pot and you want to toss the pasta a little bit in with the sauce just to get it on a plate, right? Yeah. So now if you if you actually hit, hit turn the stove on, get some olive oil in there with those ingredients, you're going to notice that the sauce starts sticking to the pasta and you get all that extra flavor uh, on. 
And that's where you want to use extra virgin olive oil. I see a lot of people cooking, frying with extra virgin olive oil. Yeah, if you're fancy, you got that kind of money, yeah, fine. But like, you really don't need it. <laughs> what does it do? Does it help? No, not really. It's, it, it turns it's, into grease. You're spending more money and you're not getting any. Yeah. But you want to use a lot of the things we do, we add olive oil at the end. We use a lot of it. You know, it's expensive, but it really adds to the dish. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a necessity in an Italian restaurant. Well, you know. Luca Onofri, my old friend, thanks for being with us. I have a dream and you're going to help me fulfill that dream. I want to die fat. <laughs> Is that I a compliment? To, I want to die slightly. I want to die just a little chunky. Ah, you know, I think we all do. How'd he look? He was dead. <laughs> but he looked kind of chunky, you know? I have a dream. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to put this in my will, but my wife won't let me. At my wake, I want a closed cas casket, but I want music playing in the background and I want strings tied to me. So, <laughs> right? And the music will be and I want I would be all you, Dave. I want the casket. Hey, you know what? Let me tell you. And the casket to pop open and meet his strings and they go pop, goes Dave do. So that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think it would be it would it would it would draw a different light to your to that situation. And people are like, yeah, be, that's him. That will be very memorable. Yeah. It might even be on the news. I think it might I would probably, if I were you, I'd do it. Yeah. Why not? I would. It's kind of part of your character. At that point, you know, but if you're gonna if you're gonna hurt your, your family's feelings, then I might not not get get into that like that, you know. But you gotta get permission from uh, your kids and, and your wife. You gotta you gotta work them over for the next 20 years or however long you've got 30 years how, how long you got Dave uh how long is your belly button gonna let you live for I don't know you know they say uh I, I've heard them say that uh in the next generation people will, could live to be 140 and healthy which gives me great pause I'm thinking I got no clothes what am I gonna wear what I got nothing to wear for 100 you want to live till 140 Dave no 140 even if it's Plus, healthy you gotta look it's super we're gonna look pretty weird at 140. Yeah, and even if you're healthy, right? You gotta go shop. I'd rather die than go shopping as it is. Right? Is it get boring? Kidding. Don't you want to know what else goes on in, in this whatever existence in the past life? I don't I you know I just want to live till I could still move around happy and healthy and not taste. Be, you want to live until you can taste. I want to as live as you can taste. As long as I could taste and I don't want to be a burden. I don't want people to say, oh flip a coin. Late. Too late for the burden part. Dude. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Believe Luke, me, I, I, it takes one to know one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being on my show. Uh, Luca. <laughs> Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Your restaurant is unbelievable. It's a great town. Uh, uh, open from, uh, we're open Tuesdays now from 4.30 to 9.30, Wednesday through Saturday from 4 to 9.30. Uh, so that's five days a week, Carmine Newburyport, CarmineNewburyport.com. Now, if people want to stay overnight, any great, any hotels in, in Newburyport? Yes, the Essex Street Inn right up the street here is great. Yep. Uh, we're trying to build a little bit more. I think as the town's trying to build out a little bit more uh, for the tourism, but, you know, it's happening slowly but surely. But definitely the Essex Street Inn up the street very close to us and to wherever you want to go. Yeah, uh, and look around in the area. And there's a lot, and now with Airbnb and VRBO, you'd be anywhere you want. You can find it. You can find it. Luca, you know what they say in Sweden, my friend. If me you're either. driving, make sure me, it's a car. Me either. <laughs> Luca on our car mines, <laughs> Newburyport. Luca, my friend, it's nice to see you again. I'll be up again with my wife. We'll spend a couple of days getting away and uh and, and we'll enjoy Love you, Dave. Again. Love you too, my friend. We'll see you soon. Have a good one. Bye now. <laughs> and we are off. Hey, we're back cooking something good. Seattle the Sun up here, my good friend Andrea Jorgensen. Last name I can't yeah. pronounce. What's your last name? I Did it change? What? I why are you talking so quietly? Aya Quinto. Aya Quinto. Aya Quinto. Aya Quinto. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a Peruvian tribe. <laughs> it is Italian. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, doesn't it? I don't know why. Oh, I've got to cut back on coffee, my friend. Andrea, I've yeah. got 56. 
I had probably eight cups of coffee my whole life up to 56. What? That's oh, yeah. it? Yep. Now I'm like five a day. Usually by seven o'clock, I've had maybe four or five. By eight o'clock, oh, okay. I've always had five. And then it's usually it all, a three cover. And then it developed into a bigger problem. I don't like this shirt. It makes me look like I have boobs. I don't like it. I used to go to bars and check out girls be like, nice. And I'm like, man, mine are bigger. I got to lose <laughs> some weight. I've got to lose some weight. I, I, I don't like the shirt. And it's hot. You said it's cold in Seattle. It is. It's cold today. It was 56 when I woke up today. Yeah. Uh, We're only yeah. supposed to have a high of 72, whereas the rest of the week, it's supposed to be like mid 80s. So I guess I shouldn't complain that it's cool today, but. No, it's brutally hot. I took my dog out for a walk at 5.15 this morning down along Connecticut mm-hmm. River, and it was absolutely steaming hot already. Ugh. Well, you guys get the humidity. That's we the get difference. the humidity. It's not so much the heat. It's the humidity. It's the humidity, for sure. Next person who says that, I'm going to have to smack them upside the head. <laughs> not enough. You know, funny story. I ran in. I was down. I'm in Hatfield today. Not yeah. actually not in Sunapee. It's usually Seattle, Sunapee, but I'm in Hatfield today. Like this little, the beach goes with me everywhere. If anybody's ever <laughs> wondering, it goes with me everywhere. And uh, ran the police chief, and he's from small town, giving me, hey. a, come here. He shows, you know, one of my favorite people in the whole world. I thought he was going to show me a picture of me, which I was thrilled because I don't know him very well. But, but he showed my goddaughter who owns a sailboat and does sailboat tours down in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was like, that's my goddaughter, Stephanie. So that's my kind of cool story for the day. That's cool. And then I have a bitch for today because I'm really unhappy about something. Uh-uh. I've had enough. Okay. Because if you need a screwdriver, you always have the wrong screwdriver. If you need a Phillips head, you got a flathead. If you got a flathead, you need a Phillips head. Why the hell do you have to have two different types of screwdrivers? Why can't there just be one type of screwdrivers? I know it's not food related, but say I'm trying, say I need a screw, I can make it food related, right? Say my blender's broken. And I being the fix it guy that I am, need to take out the back thing. Yeah. Which proves how much I know about tools and fixing things. I yeah. Mm-hmm. The back thing. Yeah. And no matter what, I know that when I look underneath there to unscrew these, this, not these, this thing, right? If I need a screw, if I need a Phillips head, I'm not going to have it. Why do you need two different kinds of screwdrivers? They're much. Do you not have a set of tools? Uh, Well, I have a toolbox, but in my toolbox, I have a phone. So if anything's ever broken, I can just take my phone out of the toolbox, call whoever I need to call. Yeah, Yeah, I do. I'm not kidding. No, I, oh, I believe you, but. Yeah. And I, since COVID, I've become a little more handy. But why? Why do you need two different kinds? Well, and then you buy things and you need an Allen wrench for them. Oh, that's the worst. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and you're looking at these pictures of galaxies, billions and billions, you know, millions and trillions of whatever, light years or half a light, mm-hmm. whatever, a long way away. You have these perfect pictures. It's like, if you robbed a 7-Eleven in 75,000 light year galaxies away, you're busted with these cameras. But if you rob a 7-Eleven in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's just some grainy picture that they can't recognize and the police need help in finding this person, but nobody knows who the hell it is. Some things are on my nerves today. <laughs> on my nerves. It's, really? so, it's so true. Hey, today we are talking about one of my f- one of my favorite things. You know, it cracks me up. You say this about every ingredient we talk about, which means you love food, which is- I love food. Perfect. There's nothing I don't like. You're like, oh, it's one of my favorites. And the next week, oh, it's one of my most favorite. It's so true though. <laughs> and the only thing I used to hate, I used to hate goat cheese like it was nobody's business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The thought of goat cheese on my tongue would make me gag. And now I love it. There's not yes. a single thing I like squid. I, yeah, I've never had ants. I don't think I want to eat ants. I don't, I don't want any of the bugs. But I probably, if I, if I could get past that, I'd probably like it. Yeah. Because I love all kinds of fish. I like everything. There's nothing I don't like. I like rare, you know, I like medium rare pork. You don't have to cook pork to death anymore. Mm-hmm. Trigonosis yeah. is long since gone. Yeah. You don't have to kill it. Me, m- medium to medium rare pork is fine. I like everything. There's nothing I don't like. 
that's food related. But yeah. blueberries, always one of my favorites. And I, I'll eat them by the handful, which is good because now that I got this type two diabetes thing going on, the, I guess the blueberries are really good for that. Oh, okay. Really good for blueberries and blackberries. I think I like blackberries more than blueberries. Do you really? I like blackberries. I like okay. coconuts too. When you break it open, it smells just like a lady lying in the sun. Yeah, I have reasons for liking different things. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. That's quite blue specific. Blueberries. The Northwest is known for their blueberries. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Very Actually, cool. the kids and I, we go to a um, blueberry farm every single year. And what I like about this farm, it's a little different this year because our weather's been so strange, but what I like about this farm is that they have like seven or eight different varieties. So as the season goes, there's always like a new variety coming in. This year, I think they're all kind of at the same time because the weather's been so strange, but um, we picked this one variety called Duke and uh, they're pretty big berries. They're like the size of a nickel. Uh, um, different different taste for different varieties. Yeah, different. So like, you know, you might have two varieties that are like, you know, beginning of season, and then you might have four that are ready at the same time. And then you might have like two late ones. Yeah. Um, so we pick this one variety and where we go, the bushes are always like loaded. The kids and I went picking last weekend. We were there a little over an hour and we picked 12 pounds. Wow. That's a lot. Of, blueberries aren't very heavy. <laughs> that's a lot. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Food. And you yep. brought them home and did what? Washed them? Oh, for I mean, you know, your typical blueberry muffins, right? There's nothing tastes better than like fresh blueberries in a blueberry muffin. But uh, for the most part, I, I freeze most of them just so that you can have that same taste year round. You know, when you're making your blueberry muffins in January, they taste a little bit better with, you know, picked, uh, picked blueberries. Um, but I throw them in salads. I throw them in smoothies. Uh, I do. I, we do a bunch of stuff with them. And blueberries, if they're frozen, you just put them out on the counter for a while and, or do you put them in a- Generally pot? with the blueberries, when you're baking them, like say you're doing muffins, you don't want to thaw them in advance because they'll, they'll uh, exude all the juices and then your muffins will turn purple. That was going to be my question. Will you lose all those juices if you do that? Yep. So generally I like, I like to make the batter and then put that in the muffin cups and then like poke the blueberries in. Um, and so that like also if you're like put them in and then you're mixing the batter they're going to turn the batter purple too so i like to put them in right before i throw them in the oven i like them when they've been frozen and then you've had them out in a warm day for like half an hour so they still have a little bit of that frozen bite to them mm, i like that with raspberries taking a whole handful and then taking another handful dropping <laughs> your pen ah. <laughs> i like that crunch but you still get that sweetness but now i can't put sugar on it anymore why would you put sugar on blueberries? Oh, I like sugar. You know what I like? I t I pick uh, I take uh, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of maple syrup, a little bit of honey, and then I just just uh, cook it up in a pan. Just get a little paste, and I pour it over my blueberries, and then I mix them all up my hand. You know? <laughs> I do because it has a great. No wonder you have this diabetes problem. <laughs> I don't know where this came from. <laughs> oh, I know. Cutting back on the sugar is so hard. But agave, yeah. believe it or not, is okay. Not okay, but it's better than it's some of the other ones. How about maple syrup? Is that way up there? That's way up there. Is that's it? that's yeah. a lot of sugar. But agave is too, so I don't know why it's not as bad. You know what? Yeah. It's The internet's great because yeah. you can just keep looking until you find something that's not true. And then you're like, oh, this fits me perfectly. <laughs> this is perfect. Cigars, cigars, you know, look, when I buy, if, if I was going to buy cigars, I yeah. looked for the cigars that said cigars may cause harm during pregnancy. All right. Well, I'm okay with that one. You're in the clear. Not going to hurt me. <laughs> it's the same with food. You know, you, you can find anything you want. Yeah. I mean, a couple of months ago I had, and I had something and I was like, uh-oh, like a little thing. I was like, uh-oh. So I looked online and I found out that I was dying. I had like six hours to live. Oh, okay. Yeah, because when you look up anything on WebMD. Oh, Dr. Google, yep. Six hours to live. Yep. So I go to the doctor and she looks at it. She goes, huh, I don't know what it is, which you never want to hear. Yeah. Like that Seinfeld episode. You want to hear the doctor go, ah, forget about it. It's nothing. Go back. Enjoy your life. So she's like, oh, I don't know. So she goes on her computer. She starts putting, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, don't look it up online. I said, that's not the answer I'm looking for. I could do that. It was nothing. You know what it was? It was, uh, I, I won't even tell you. It was something that I spilled and it stained. 
So she took like she took like a alcohol cleaner and rubbed it. She goes, I think this might be. She goes, Yep. And it came off. I was like, oh, okay. Um, what do I owe you? Did your insurance pay for that? I don't know. I, I, I think out of guilt I paid this the $78. Oh my God. It's so hard getting bills now too from doctors. You get bills from the doctors or ins- you get those insurance company things. Look at it. Hey, how you doing? I got my like, uh, but the shirt, it it's the shirt that makes me look fat. No, have you ever, uh, you get these in- insurance bills and it's like this thick. It's like, what, what is this? Or the banks do it too. You know, it's, it's CYA. They're going to cover their own asses. Mm-hmm. So they'll get yeah. sued. But you have to know a foreign language. I'm a relatively intelligent individual. I re- I started reading words that I didn't understand. And I was like, I- I'll never finish. I will. I could do this all day. I'll never finish. So I went to the freaking refrigerator, took some blueberries out. <laughs> ate it all there you go. So what else? I mean, uh, uh, blueberry ice cream. I'm going to make blueberry ice cream. Ice cream. Remember, remember you shame me because I've never made ice cream? Yes. I'm yes. Make blueberry ice cream. That's one of my plans. Okay. Uh, usually I like to do um, every summer around this time. I usually make a pavlova. Have you ever made one of those? No. Is that the guy whose dog got he, he, drooled all over him? No, that's um, Pavlova. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Nope. Nope. What is it? Definitely not. Uh, a pavlova is egg whites and sugar. It's basically like a giant meringue and you like shape it into kind of like a wide bowl and then you I bake it off in the oven. And I usually fill it like with the blueberries. I usually fill it with like uh, a layer of lemon curd and then a layer of whipped cream and throw blueberries in there. And that's, that's, oh, that's really nice. It's Simon delicious. Pierce makes the best blueberry custard. Kind oh, of really? Things. Yeah. Only for only short periods. And I don't know if they do it all the time. Huh. But that's that's one of my favorite restaurants. I love Simon Pierce. Have you been there? No. In it's in Vermont, it's not far from from say White River Junction. Very very good food. No, I haven't been there. Wow. And you lived? Didn't you live in Sunup for a while? Yeah. Newport, or was that your parents? My parents. Your parents. All right. You have to go next time you come to town with your husband. You've got to go to Simon Pierce if you're in that area. Okay. One of the best restaurants in New England. Okay. Son of a bitch is won't come on my show, but it is one of the best restaurants. <laughs> so you know what I've done? This is like I, I I had one of my assistants call up and say, ah, uh, yes, we're with the uh, cooking uh, show, and our host likes to uh, he's a food critic, so he likes to taste the food first before he invites people to be on the show. So now I'm going to say my name. That's what they did. So now I have reservations because I'm going up with my mom and the whole family. Oh, nice. Yeah. So then I'm going to call back and say, well, uh, I tried it. It was excellent. So we are willing to have you on the show. <laughs> I'm going to try to trick them into coming on my show. Um, They're the only people so far who have absolutely said no. Interesting. Yep. Gordon Ramsay said no. Well, to be expected. Yep. And um, that's it. No, I don't know. <laughs> I've, had a, like, lot. I've had a lot of no. <laughs> a lot of no's. But blueberries, we don't have blueberries. We have blackberries, which I love. There's blueberry farms up in oh, around Santa Fe. Oh, a lot of blueberry farms. Yeah. But in my in my yard in Hatfield in the backyard, we have a line of blackberry and they come out usually in August. Yeah, they're they're later, yeah. And we have two apple trees too. So oh, nice. it's pretty the apples are just really coming in and the blueberry and the blackberries are just coming out and you can count on every morning deer or yeah. bear yeah. being there i mean every i'm like get away from my blackberries go eat, the apple. <laughs> go eat the apple you can't yell at a bear yeah because they they have they have feelings you they know? Badly. yeah well they're they have you don't want to hurt their feelings either right I'm, I'm sure they're very concerned about that. I don't think they are. <laughs> but they're eating my blackberries. But mm-hmm. I go out and pick those. So blueberry muffins, blueberry scones. Oh, yeah. I haven't yeah. made scones in a long time. You know what? I stopped making things that I'm not supposed to eat. Yeah. Which stinks because you really still eat it. You just go buy it somewhere else. Right. <laughs> it doesn't do right. any good whatsoever. 
Matter of fact, I went. Yeah, to I started a- making my chocolate chip cookies smaller. <laughs> so oh. when I have one cookie, it's one instead of like a cookie. You know. I and I like. I mean, do you like your cookies crunchy? I like mine soft and gooey and loaded with chocolate. And then I put whipped cream on top all around it in a circle. And, and you know, you're, you're reaching into the blender. And then you don't have any room left because you've got one little cookie, whipped cream that's this big, and you have that much left in the blender. So you start to think to yourself, right? You think, David, if I leave that in the blender and just leave it for like three months, it's going to turn green. I need to eat that right away. So you eat the rest of the, in the blender and then you uh, eat all the whipped cream. Candy. And then you're like, well, then you think to yourself, oh shit, it's just a cookie, all that other sugar. How much harm can that do? That's how my mind works. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need some, I, I think I know, need to go to uh, diabetes counseling. Uh, yes. And also, you need somebody that follows you around and just like slaps your hand when you go to reach for something. No, nah, I'm married already. Um, <laughs> no, nah, my wife's like, hey, listen, if you're that dumb, get what you deserve. And not in <laughs> a mean way. You. Not in a mean way. Yeah, I mean, she's right. It's on me. Yeah, of I course. Mean, that's, that's my my doing. I do not like this shirt. Look, it doesn't fit right. It's way boxy. It's boxy, it's, right? It, your sleeves, I don't think, should be that long. Is that a size bigger? No. Well, it didn't used to be. So that's the other thing. I lost a couple of pounds. I'm changing my shirt. Stay right there. Are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. I was like, what? I don't like this shirt. This is the last time I'm wearing this shirt. Plus it's hot. It's, it's not comfortable. I want to buy one of those. What are they called? Untuck it. I hate shopping. I hate even internet shopping. I hate shopping more than anything. I saw this report that said, uh, a couple of years ago, a chronologist said, you know, we'll, we're in the next generation or generation and a half, people can live to be healthy, can live to be 135 to 140. I would rather die than go shopping. And I have nothing to wear for a 140 year old man, right? So, no, absolutely not. Well, oh, you have two daughters, so I'm sure they would go shopping for you. No. No? No, they shop for themselves. My wife's in shop for me. I don't, I hate shopping. I hate it. It's the my least favorite thing. And then you go to the mall with all of them. Yeah. And they go into the stores. And I don't know what they're doing in there, but I wait outside on those little benches with all the other husbands and boyfriends. Mm-hmm. And we're out there. And we're just looking at each other. We're all, think, we're all thinking the same thing, right? It's the third quarter. There's 13 minutes to go. If they would just come out of here, we could catch the end of the football game. We're all thinking the same thing. And then they come out and then they, they it, it's been forever. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, I just had to buy something for something. I had to get this for whatever reason, or I had to get it because it was on sale. I saved $852. That's already bad news. Right? And then they go home and they start looking at it at the mirror and it just doesn't look right. It's like this shirt. This is what I must've looked at this shirt. I must've bought this shirt at some point, probably 1996. And I probably looked in the mirror and said, huh. And I was fatter back then. Maybe that's it. I want those untuck it shirts. That's where this whole thing started. I'll go to the untuck it site and I'll click the buttons and I'll hope that the shirt shows up the next day. But then it shows up and it never fits because you don't know what size you are. It's like when you buy something chemical that you have to put in your pool or something that you have to measure it's another thing it drives me crazy other than this shirt you go and you buy something right and say it's for a pool or for and it's you have to, it's it's concentrated so you have to put only x amount per ten thousand gallons of water so it'll say uh, use 15.4 fluid ounces for every twenty thousand gallons of water right so first of all how do you measure 20,000 gallons of water? You got to look up what kind of pool you have. You got to go find pictures, right? And you got to get the picture that looks like your pool. And then you got to find out what kind of pool that is. And then it says one's eight feet, one's 10 feet. So maybe it's close enough, right? So then you're like, okay, you add it directly into your filter, right? 13.7 fluid ounces or whatever the hell I said. So then you look at the bottle, right? And it's got a little measuring cup, but the measuring cup is in quartz. So now you got to, 
do the math, figure out quarts to ounces, ounces to quarts, gallons to pounds, stones to whatever, right? So now by the time you've done all that, you're exhausted. You're exhausted, right? So you just forget it. I'm not putting that in, jump in a pool. You've got all your clothes on. You go downstairs, towel, get undressed. You're just, don't have your glasses on. What, what, what happens, Andrea? What happens is you put on this shirt because you can't see what shirt it is. Now you feel like crap. Why don't they have measuring cups that match the directions? If it says add 13.5 fluid ounces, the cup that comes on top should say, they're, same when they're cooking something. It's the exact same thing. I mean, if you got a bottle of something and you know, you're making it, you say, it should say, the sa it should be the same. No, then you got to go underneath the cabinet. The one cabinet that's not mine in the whole house is the baking one. So then I got to go find the measuring cup, which you're throwing things out of the way because you're frustrated because everything in my section until somebody touches it is right where it's supposed to be. You know, frying pans. I'm, I'm in a bad mood today, if you didn't know. <laughs> frying pans. You can stack like nine frying pans in a drawer because they stack on top of each other. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put them in the same cabinet with the pots because the pots stock on a different too. So you can keep them separate. So when you need them, bam, they're here or bam, they're there. But if you know where everything is, it's great. But then people move them around. And it's not my wife. It's it's when the kids are home. How Exactly how many cups of coffee have you had today? I had five cups of coffee today. <laughs> And the other problem with coffee is then I went to I went to Europe, I went to Italy. They have really good coffee in Italy. Mm -hmm. So then you come back here and you're addicted to really crappy coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And then the coffee maker won't work and you're screwed because you don't have a Phillips head screwdriver. And it's a Phillips head instead <laughs> of the regular one. Open the freezer up and have some blueberries and just relax. Yeah. We've got a good show coming up in August. Yeah. It's going to be great. Friend. We've got Jack yeah. and you've got a friend out in Boston that's going to... Uh, we're going to hit the market at Copley. Yeah. And then we're going to uh, go to the restaurant and uh, yeah. see how he cooks. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. And Jack is so going much. to be there with us. You know, Jack is a really good cook. He's only 24 years old. Very good cook. Really? Very good cook. Good for him. I'm impressed. And he enjoys it. Has he made ice cream? I don't think so. Maybe Jack and I should make ice cream together. Yeah. I think Jack enjoys watching me do like crazy things or every once in a while I, I make decent mistakes. I made the best. Um, they were unbelievable. I made the best sweet potato fries uh, a couple of weeks ago and Jack was filming it. Okay. Really good. Cumin, salt, pepper. Um, I'm trying to remember uh, a little bit of uh, paprika. Mm -hmm. Dusted them off. Olive oil. Actually, I used sesame oil. And then I just cut them really thin. And I put them in a giant Tupperware thing and I shook it like crazy to mix them up. See that? Da -da 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 My shirt sucks. So I um <laughs> shaking it like crazy. The top comes flying off everywhere. There wasn't one left in the <laughs> thing. I had to do it all over again. First, I had to clean the whole kitchen. Right. Right. And I always brag when I'm but when I'm cooking i would say hey start with an empty dishwasher start with a start with an empty right. sink yeah yeah. i had to wash them all but everything by hand including all i mean it went everywhere we're talking paprika cumin all the oil oh sesame oil i love this much luckily i love the smell of sesame oil <laughs> a and b i have a dog so those yeah, two things help. but i didn't yeah. let the dog eat the sweet potatoes so that's not that's in the bible that too shall pass you got to get that <laughs> out of there as quickly as you possibly can so I had to do it over again. But I think Jack enjoyed that. I think that's kind of entertainment that he enjoys. But he's a really good cook. And he's going to be with us. And uh, then we're going to head over to Albie's or Alba's uh, fruit and vegetable stand. He's been on a show a couple of times uh, in the north end of Boston. So it's going to be a fun day. And then you have one of your best friends. You're heading out to Tanglewood after that. Yep. 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 Great. And Very Jack, excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good day. A good trip home. Yeah. I haven't been home in three years now has it been that long well before covid do you have any family left? do you have family left here i don't no but all my friends are and my husband has family there and where's he from Connecticut. 
Connecticut. What part of Connecticut? The hoity-toity or the New Haven? So he's, he's normal. Yeah. Not the hoity-toity. Yeah. New Haven has a great... Matter of fact, I, I was going to mention this to Jack. Hey, Jack. Well, I don't know why he's not here. Jack's on a cruise. <laughs> Jack's on a cruise. Oh, is he? Good for him. He's cruising the Caribbean, and then he's home for a week. Then he's going to Germany for six days with his uh, with his other part of his family. Nice. So Jack's not having a nice time. Good for him. But we are going to take a train, and we're going to go okay. from Northampton down to New Haven. New Haven is a great stretch of um, food food carts. Food trucks. Oh, food trucks? Nice. Yeah, a whole section right near the train station. Sweet. So we're going to go down and we're just going to eat and eat and film and eat and film. I'm going to see if I can eat one thing from, I think there's like 26 food carts. Oh my God. So if I can eat. Uh, one the Phantom Gourmet usually does a uh, food truck thing in September in Boston. No, the Phantom Gourmet is. <gasps> no. Oh no. I guess he said some things that were inappropriate. Shut him down. So I take back everything I said about this shirt. I take it all back. I love this shirt. I think it's a good shirt. It's got a good heart. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to get shut down. No, no. Yeah, Oops. Phantom Game A is no more. Interesting. I like okay. their energy. I like that shirt. Yeah. I like that's when I like I like PBS on Saturday morning or Saturday. Oh yeah, you were talking about that. Day. I can't yeah. believe you ever saw that. You no. never saw PBS? Are you kidding me? It's like great cooking shows all day, all day long. We don't have TV. We have streaming. We don't have like normal cable. That's another thing. What's up with this? How do you, my daughter got when she moved to I don't care what whatever she was at the time. I said you get your cable hooked up, and she had a screen that cost her like 120 bucks, but it was beautiful, huge yeah. screen. And a little thing that wired in and all of a sudden TV came on. Yeah. I was like, hey, I like that. Yeah. You're not old enough. Back in the day when we had TV, especially here in, in, I grew up in Northampton. And uh, you only got three stations. Well, you got four. You got Channel 57. Yeah. BBS. You got um, Channel 40, Channel 3, Channel 22. ABC. Yeah. Yeah. And Channel 3 was in Hartford. Oh, okay. but everybody had it if you had a tv you had an antenna on your roof and you had uh -huh. a thing that changed the antenna of north south east or west okay so if you wanted you knew which exactly where to put it they, you would mark on the dial that would go 360 degrees so if you want channel 40 you would put it to the arrow to here if you wanted okay. channel three you would put it to here right and as it went from one channel to the other channel it would become like snow yeah, yeah, so I remember this. Come back, and you do remember. I remember this, yeah. yeah I miss that, and I missed the I missed the TV going off the air at midnight too. Oh yeah, something nice about that, you know. They played the national anthem. You know, you've been up long enough. There's no when you hear up. that, yeah. You don't have to stay up and watch another episode of of McMillan and Wife. You know, <laughs> enough is enough. Time to go to sleep. Yep, yep. Well, thank you for for walking me through this day where I was very angry very, very yes angry. yes you are <laughs> I'm angry and now I'm hungry I don't know what I'm gonna make tonight I cooked last night I cooked the night before I think I'll get something to go I think I'm gonna go to mosaic mosaic has the best oh yeah salads, the freshest salads mosaic is great I miss them uh, and I also the uh, honey peanut butter crepe oh I haven't had that oh so good yeah. Anything with peanut butter to me, I mean. Yeah, yeah, sign me up. For I sure. love peanut butter. And I don't like like all natural. I like No, I'll say Jif. Like Jif. give me the regular. You don't want any Jif right now. No, it's it's they they took care of the salmonella. It's fine. It's back on the shelves. Uh, I'm going with Skippy for a while. Okay. And usually like I I usually like creamy peanut butter. I'm not a I don't like the peanut butter with the nuts in them. You don't like what? Peanut butter with the nuts in them. I like the creamy peanut. Oh butter. yeah, yeah. That's my preference. All right, next week um, I am making. Uh, we're gonna make tomato soup. Nice. I'm gonna okay. bring. I'm gonna have Jack. He'll be back. We'll be in the New Hampshire studio. Actually, we'll be in the New Hampshire kitchen. Okay. And uh, we're gonna make tomato soup, and then I'm gonna chill it. I'm gonna give you she swats. It's gonna be nice. Nice. Yeah. 
Probably delicious. I'm walk you through that recipe. What do you got next week? Do you know yet? I don't know. We'll see. Because we're tomato, starting huh? to get uh, peaches in season. They should be in in the next couple of weeks. So we'll see. Favorites. Absolutely my favorite. Do I always say that, don't I? You do. I do, I do love peaches. Um, actually, I think I'll wait. Tomatoes are two weeks away. Yeah, tomatoes are a little early for you guys. Yeah, mine aren't. Uh, I always plant mine like two weeks after everybody else. So I still have them. It's always a risk because you never know. Yeah. Every once in a while, I get a cold September morning. But in this September, I still have I still have beefsteak tomatoes. And I do, nice. I do love the tomatoes here. I always thought they were the best in the world. But after coming back from Italy, those tomatoes are unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, that's next week. Andrea George is my friend. And pretty soon we're all going to be together. We can't wait to yes. do that. It'll be great. Hey, Andrea Jorgensen, Seattle to, well, Hatfield today. Usually Hatfield Seattle today. is fun of me. Yeah, yeah. And we'll see you soon. We're going to take a break. I'm going to kind of relax. I am going to change my shirt. I got a little color too. I do have a little color. I'm going to change my shirt and uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Sounds good, David. Have a good one. Hey, that's it. Cooking Something Good is coming to an end. Thanks to Luca Onafri from... Carmine's Restaurant in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Don't forget, come to our shop, csgbn.com, and you can get a gift certificate for half off to Carmine's uh, Restaurant in Newburyport. Great restaurant, really cute little oceanside town. And it's, hey, you're saving 50%. You can't go wrong. Also, when you're at our shop, you got to try this. It's Jones Barbecue. Let me get straight. Jones Barbecue. It's uh, we've had them on our show before. A little place in Kansas City, and they pack them in. You wait in line forever to get their chicken and their barbecue sauce. Uh, Mary and Shorty Jones. They are amazing. One of my favorite guests of all time. And this is my favorite barbecue sauce. You can get that at our site too, csgbn.com. Thanks to Andrea Jorgensen, Seattle to Sunapi. Uh, again, thanks to Luca Onafri from Carmines, and thanks to you for listening. Until next time, remember, food is fun, fun is food, and it's always foodie fun time here at Cooking Something Good. Until next time, bye-bye.